Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 468. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it. So first up, new Spike book appar- uh, apparently coming from... Sorry, co- uh, coming? <laughs> A new Spike book apparently coming to Finland. My Little Pony, Pony... Ni- me- da- uh, mm, mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, pony named Spike, yes. So let's see. I was not expecting something from G4 outside of the comics to be our news today, but a new book has been listed over on a Finnish book site called Pony Nimintile Translating to Pony Named Spike. It apparently ar- uh, It's apparently arriving in October 4th. So just a few months away, we don't have any information on if there will be an official English translation of it, considering the author is Finnish. But I'm sure one of you crazy in this uh, industrious fan fandom goers will translate if we never do. For now, there is Google. I fought their translation to... Okay, so translation. Mm. Whew, this is going to be fun. When the dragon name... Uh, when the dragon became a pony, in a richly illustri- uh, In the richly illustrated, easy-to-read children's novel, Princess Twilight Sparkle, beloved dragon helper Spike, turns into a pony for one day. Spike has spent his entire life with ponies, so it's no wonder he feels more like a pony than a dragon at times, though Spike feels like an outsider because he doesn't know what it feels like to gallop with ponies, friends, on adventure, and doesn't have a cutie mark. Ah, oh, good, they, they, they obscured it, okay, go, 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 a cutie mark, until magic comes to his aid and make his dreams come true. Starting pony illustration have been conjured up by intermissional in, acclamation illustrator Anton, Anthony Cornell, who has drawn both SpongeBob SquarePants and group search puppies. I feel like that's not the right title. The warm hearted humorous story is suitable for those who have learned to read but also other pony fans or for children under school age to read aloud. Okay. <coughs> um, let's zoom this on this. <laughs> so, uh, this is one of those cool stories in concept and having it official is really awesome. Uh, we had fan fiction done by the fan community who have wrote something similar. Um, give or take and whatnot, and usually um, expect friendships and uh, shippings and whatnot. Yes. So this one, I feel like it's very interesting and I would love to see the official, quote-unquote official spin on things. Uh, and by that, I mean uh, Hasbro has greenlit the idea and project and it has come to fruition. One of the few things I like about the cover is that the uh, Spike as the pony is a pegasi, which is pretty cool because uh, if I do remember right, in some of the um, fix, he was a normal earth pony. Back then, he didn't have wings, so uh, it was granted that, okay, he was more of an earth, earth pony. So now that he has wings in his older dragon form, um, it's logical to say that yes, he could be a pegasi. A unicorn would do too, but no one's complaining. Uh, so other than that, I like the color team. Yes, it matches with Spike. I, I, I like the bit of fang that he has there. And also the way that the... Uh, what you call this? The, the way that they obscure the cutie mark location is pretty smart. So you won't know how his cutie mark is going to officially look like. 
So yeah, um, coming in October 4th, so there's going to be something to look forward to. And I do hope there's a translated version of the book for the English goers. If not, then I'm sure the fandom will find a way. Let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> next one is G5 Coloring Book gives new description to cast, sorry, uh, to the cast cutie marks. Uh, Generation 5 news continues. Yes, that seems to be the trend here. We got more coming out of that finished book site. Ah, so it is finished. Uh, with a coloring book and sticker book providing additional insights into the characters. Uh, Google, blah, 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 and so on. Okay, I'm just going to scroll through. And this seems to be your typical kids activity book where you have a lot of coloring and whatnot and stickers. Stickers are cool. And I think this is the one that um, Sophisto is referring to with, okay, here's how the QD mark looks like and how, uh, and, and this is what the quote unquote represents and whatnot. And yeah, here are the translation. So zip the flyer. I am lightning fast. All right. Ah, so I, I'm guessing this is kind of uh, move your thing here and connect the dots kind of thing. Okay. I like, uh, sorry, easy. I like arts and craft. Hmm. Yeah, I can see this. I can see this. So this one goes here. This one goes here. All right. <clears throat> Sunny, watching the star is great. Sunny, so yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pip, I'm the star of the music sky. Yay, okay. And I protect other ponies. Yes, all right. So it's, it's kind of a kid's activity book, but it kind of sums up what their cutie mark represents for them, the main five. <coughs> or should I call them the new five? Because like we, we had the main six, we had the student six, we had the alternative ponies. Um, I, I call them the B team because they're, they're kind of not really the main crew, but they're kind of important. And by that, I mean, we have what? Uh, Starlight Glimmer, Trixie, Maud, um, uh, Sun, Sunburst, and also Maud's boyfriend, what was it? Uh, Stick in the Mud, I think. Oh, um, Mudbriar, yes. <laughs> so there's those five there in terms of the other side of the friendship thing. So I'm just going to call them the B team because they are... And also uh, the new five, they, they look cool too. They look cool too. And yes, this is a quick uh, summarization of their QD mark and what it represents. And we got no idea how the show is going to work because why do some models have QD mark and some don't? Is it some kind of thing that they want to hide it or whatever? <sighs> so this is just a quick down description. So that's cool. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Ah, this is fun, this is fun. <clears throat> Cast and release date reveal for G5 movie, My Little Pony, A New Generation. Now that more, uh, now that's more like it, considering we've been getting a lot of merch news lately, I was wondering when we've start getting more information on the movie itself. Uh, thanks to a short video posted by Netflix himself, we have a definite release date. A definite name, uh, well, uh, as well as a first look at the cast of the movie itself. There are also very brief clips of the movie in the video. Okay, so uh, this is kind of okay. Let's see. We have Vanessa Hutchins playing. Um, let's zoom this one. Okay, we have Vanessa Hutchins playing Sunny Star Scout, Kimiko. Glenn playing Easy Moon Bow, James Marston as Hitch Trailblazer, Sophia Carson as Pip Petals, Lisa Kolshai as Zip Storm, Ken Jung as Sprout, Elizabeth Perkins as 
Fisili? Oh, wow, that's a word I have not seen before. Pis, uh, maybe it's an F. You say it as F. Felicia? Felicia. Oh, well, okay. I, I guess that's close. I could be wrong. Uh, Jane Karowski as Queen Haven. Phil Lamar as L. Alphabet? 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 I think that's how you spell the alphabet. Alphabet. Look, I, I guess. And uh, Michael McKean as Agri. Wow, I got no idea. I, I feel like I'm just saying things wrong. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so we do have a lot of uh, well known actors here and. Yeah, oh boy, it's a long time in cat, blah blah blah. Okay, so this is cool, this is cool. Um, what I want to do is just check out IMDb for a bit. So I'm going to go for the full cam view and check out the IMDb. Uh, my little. Oh, sorry. IMDb, my little pony new generation and see what what are the actors did beforehand i mean uh honestly we seen names and whatnot so let, let's see okay um, so I, I think this is okay to show i think all right <clears throat> so first up we have uh james marsden he played one of his iconic role is he plays cyclops in the um X-Men movies. Yep. Oh, he also played Enchanted as Prince Edward. And I am also guessing that he... Oh, yep. He played Tom in the Sonic movie. So, he has been doing a lot. So, yay. He, he's cool. He's cool. Like, um, go check out this new Sonic movie because it's kind of cool. So, let's go for Vanessa Hutchins. I remember he. She, sorry, I remember she played uh, in the High School Musical, and that is true. Uh, Journey Center of the Earth. So what else? Uh, the yeah, she 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 has she has some um, acting prowess under her belt. So yay. Elizabeth Perkins. Um, you know what? Uh, okay, Philomar. Philomar is one of those characters that everybody should know. Um, come on, interwebs. Don't hang on me now. This is really awkward. Maybe I should just open a new one and see how it goes. Okay, so... Mm, mm. It feels like my internet is not cooperating with me. Okay, Ken... Uh, Ken Jeong. Uh, from what I can remember, yes, he played some roles in The Hangover 1 and 2. Uh... And yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he's the quote unquote funny guy. That's cool. I know, but oh, that's him. Wow. <laughs> okay, show me why you know. So yeah, he has some like problems. He did um voiceover, so that's cool. And other than that, I I can't say much. Ah yes, Philomar so did. So uh, Philomar, he is well known for the voice of. Samurai Jack and other things that he did was let's see if I can uh, spot a few things I, I'm guessing you guys at home uh, already noticed uh, let's see Devil May Cry care okay a uh, family guy okay kids disenchanted okay um I am not getting DC Superhero Girls Flash Barry Allen. If I'm not mistaken, he also played Green Lantern, right? Huh. Oh, okay. Anywho. So we we have a lot of awesome actors who are going to voice the character. So yay, that's awesome. Uh one of my few worries is that after the movie, there's going to be a TV series or a um, 3D animated series for the show. Um, I'm not 100% sure 
how many seasons or whatnot. So here, here's one of the big worries that I have, and that is when you hire big name actors, they might not reprise their role in the TV series, and we we are promised that we are going to have a seasonal series, uh, probably season one or two. So having big name actors come on board for a movie and just leave after they're done kind of hurts the, what you call this, um, kind of hurts the show because when, what makes G4 work was they started out with um, normal voice actors, uh, voice actors and actress. They did their jobs in terms of, okay, this is um, normal to them. Like, this is my job. I talk into a microphone for a living and uh, I am very versatile. Uh, for actors, especially movie actors, they are, well, they're big name actors because, well, I appear on screen. My name has a lot of appeal. Uh, I remember what there's that one movie where uh, usually what um, usually uh, DreamWorks like to do this like they have a lot of big name actors in their movie and that's their pool and in the end it doesn't really do much for the movie because they just rely too much on big name actors. I'm not saying that this might go along that road but it feels like it because um michael mckeen uh mckeen i kind of heard that name but i got no idea what he played before uh james marsden like uh he what he's he he did well in sonic the 2020 sonic movie so there's going to be a part two coming soon i'm not 100 percent sure if it's wrapped up or not so we got no idea how uh what we, we had what vanessa hutchins so that's also another big name. So it's like going forward, like how does this or how does the show going to carry over to the series? Are they still going to reprise their role? If they are, that's going to be cool. And if here's just, here's one of the other things. If they believe in the show, like if they're hardly if they sorry, if they really believe in it, like wholeheartedly believe like there's a future for this like how g4 was we might get them on a weekly basis so that's awesome that's cool but if it's just another paycheck for them then it's going to be very disappointing after what uh we, we hear sunny scout in this big screen okay we remember her voice we remember her name uh we, we remember how her, she sounds like and we are i won't say attracted i i say we relate we enjoy we want to uh, see more of it and then suddenly when we go to the silver uh, the tv screen we just get replacement person for sunny scout or sound alike and it kind of ruins the moment ru ruins the show um one of the things i think you guys might have experienced is Discord. Discord is played by John Delancey in the TV series, which is awesome that every time when there's a Discord scene, they hired him to come on and reprise his role. But in the Pony Life series, they didn't call him back on for to reprise his role because Pony Life is kind of a quote-unquote budget uh, pony series. It's not really that appealing and uh, the target audience is mostly for the younger generations. So they had to replace his voice actor with uh, another great actor, um, <clears throat> uh, Big Max voice actor, uh, Peter Neal. Yes, sorry. Um, they, they replaced him with Peter Neal. Peter Neal did the job right. Um, didn't sound like Discord, but it had the energy and sometimes energy is important too so this is one of those cases where i feel like the sh 
going forward from new generations is that I hope that the voice actors continue or reprise the role. If not, we're going to get a sound alike or something to that effect. And it's just going to be that, like a, another cheap show, some, something like that. I mean, what needs to carry the show is the writing and the feel. Um, even if we don't get the voice actress coming back for to reprise the role for the series, as long as it's good, as long as it um, speaks to us like how G4 did, then I couldn't care less. But Phil Lamar is a TV actor. He mostly does a lot of uh, animated shows. So I do hope that his character does come back in the series so he can still continue on voicing characters. Yes. So let's move on to the next one. I've been talking for a while on that topic. <clears throat> okay. Um, Might need to cut this one out because it's the same thing. Uh, yes, we've seen... We've seen it before, we've seen it before. So, yeah, you know my take on this. So, yes. Uh, moving on. Okay. This one. Zip's Tom and her interest in science. So, this is one of those things where it is very interesting. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, note. Since a few people have been asking, the Something Nice post will continue... Again tomorrow at this slot we okay so that's something else, all right that that's not that has nothing to do with me. Okay, I'm probably going to do a big recap of all the G5 madness we've seen, uh, we've had released over the past week or two. But one thing I wanted to give a dedicated post to for now was the My Little Pony website's bio for Zip Storm. There, where she is not only a athletic rainbow dash style pony this time around, but also apparently into science. Uh, considering we won't have Twilight Sparkle around to force freak experiments on every one this gen, I wonder how far this science will go, blah blah blah, so on. Uh, the website, eh? You know what? Time for another full screen for me to look for the My Little Pony website. Let's see if the website is up and running and telling us stuff about the characters and stuff. 404! God dang it. Meet the main five. <laughs> the main five. They, they're using it. Oh god. Yes, let's meet the main five, Hasbro. Let's move this here. And okay. Sunny Star Scout. Sunny is a curious, adventurous, and determined uh, and determined to make the world a better place. Heroes never die. A pony kind, Earth Pony, Home, Maritime Bay, Cutie Mark, that's how it looks. Hobbies, roller skating. But if I do believe in the show she was seem to be using rollerblades. Uh, passion. Bringing magic and harmony to all pony kinds. Why am I... Okay, sorry. The, the bright white is hurting my eyes. So, um, bringing magic and harmony to all pony kinds. So, essentially, she's the leader of the group, the Twilight Sparkle and whatnot. Alright. So, we, we have some new places i think so maritime bay we had a bay in the pony series or g4 i'm not 100 percent sure this is new or old but anywho uh, <clears throat> hitch trailblazer hitch is dedicated to helping every pony in maritime bay as their carrying sheriff pony kind earth pony home maritime bay kiri mark looks like that Hobby, listening to music. And passion is helping ponies and critters as sheriff of Maritime Bay. Alrighty then. So, he is the appointed sheriff for Maritime Bay. That's cool. That's awesome. 
Other than that, we got no idea if he is a maritime bay local or not. Um, Self-explanatory for his passion. Um, this one has a bit more going for her with bringing back magic and harmony to all pony kind. Okay, let's move on to Easy Moonbow. Easy is an energetic unicorn who loves crafting, creating, and sparkles. She is a unicorn, lives in Brightwood Forest. Her kidney mark looks like that. Her hobbies are arts and craft. And her passion is unicycling. Unicorn up up <laughs> unicycling. Unicorn upcycling. Creating beautiful out of ordinary things. Beauty out of ordinary things. Okay. She is the creative type. Um you know, when I, I'll keep that for later and we, as we go through. All right. Zipstorm. Okay. Zip is a rebellious and athletic daredevil princess of Zephyr Heights. She is a Pegasi. She resides in Zephyr Heights. Her cutie mark looks like that. Her hobbies is science and athletics. Uh, her passion is being true to herself and encouraging that in others. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Pip Petals. Pip is the stylish and talented pop star princess of Zephyr Heights. She is a Pegasi. She resides in Zephyr Heights. Her kingdom mark looks like that. She likes singing and social media and entertaining every pony, especially her fans. There is none more to that. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. So, anyway, um, Let's break down some of the things I noticed. Uh, Sunny Star Scout here is your main character protagonist where she she is basically the Twilight and stuff and she's kind of the quote-unquote group leader trying to bring goodness and awesomeness back to Equestria. The thing that got me curious to ask is why did everybody split up? That is something for the future to consider. So, anywho, uh, okay. Um, looking at her criteria, or looking at the elements of harmony for her, she could be the element of magic. I think she is the element of magic. So, for Hitch, Hitch is well. This is very interesting. Um, diverse and interesting. He is a male character. She, sorry, he is one of the leading male characters in the My Little Pony show. I am not 100% sure for My Little Pony Tales. That is something else. That is a different beast altogether. So, to have a male character debut, that's awesome. Uh, I feel that this is a really nice change for Hasbro. And I think they should do more of this. Okay. But, let's see. Uh, he could be the element of honesty. I'm trying to remember. Like, yeah, okay. Could be honesty. So, yes, that's that. Um, kindness. Let's see. Okay. Um, Easy Moon. Easy Moon is a mix of two characters. She has the... I, I feel like she has the laughter of Pinkie Pie, uh, which is laughter, yes. And the creative spark of rarity, which is generosity. But that could not be true. Like, we got no idea if she's generous or not. But she has the laughter element pegged for her. So, uh, as we go down, we see Zip Storm. Zip Storm here, they say that she's a princess. So, that's going to be something to look forward to. Like, what kind of princess are we talking about? And stuff. So... She says, being true to herself and encouraging others, that could be a rainbow dash, sorry, um, that could be a uh, Applejack trademark, which is the honesty. But she could also be a mixture of loyalty. So I, I'm, I'm noticing that there's mixtures in 
um, the pony's character and whatnot. So that means uh, hitch here could be kindness or honesty, maybe generosity, who knows. And pit battles here, uh, entertaining everybody, so there's the generosity part. So she could be the element of generosity. So what, I've covered magic, honesty, laughter, kindness, generosity, loyalty, yes, loyalty. So zip could be it. I mean, there's a thing, I mean, there's a lot of things we don't know yet, and I would like to know more, but we have to wait till the movie comes out. So I am pretty stoked for this. This is one of those things where it is kind of cool. And last but not least, <clears throat> Galaxy Land in Edmonton, Canada has a Hasbro team now, complete with Rainbow Dash Ride and Pony Carousel. And Seth, you, 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 just a reminder, um, this is Edmund, not the the mountain. Yes, you, you did it twice. <laughs> so anywho, G4 isn't over yet. Hasbro has still a few of those long-term uh, back burner things running in various places around the world. One in particular is the Galaxy Land Park over in Edmonton, Canada that has adopted a, f a new Hasbro theme for its overall aesthetics. Include in the... Uh, in included, sorry, uh, include in that is a pony section with Rainbow Dash drop style ride a car and a carousel in more honish colors. Things are still under construction, but at least they've got good amount going already. I've seen the video already and it's 7 minutes long and I recommend you go do so too. It's a really interesting watch if you like or if you're curious about it. So wh what can I say about uh, this? The, the, the theme park is inside a mall and that's cool and Hasbro has kind of plopped money to keep the theme park alive I think, I'm not 100% sure. And the only pony attraction is the uh, merry-go-round or the carousel. I don't know. What was you call the spinning thing where you sit in a balloon and just... So there's that. And the kid version of the drop thingy. Yeah. Uh, go check out video. Video is cool. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm sure how many other pony stuff they're going to put in there. But still, this is cool. This is cool. I do hope that they can do more with it. Uh, one of the few reasons why they couldn't do more is because of the pandemic, uh, because of how things are going for Canadian government with closures due to the pandemic. They had to, you know, close shop, open shop, close shop, open shop, just so that people will... Well, it's for the safety of people. But anywho, um, that's the news for this week. So, as you can see, I'm trying something new. The microphone setup that I have here is one of those things that, hey, this is, this is, I'm trying something new. Um, so, yay, uh, let's see how it goes. Other than that, uh, I want to, you know what, I, I, I can't think of anything. So, let's move on to, well, the next topic, and next topic is what have I been doing with my week. So, my week has been rather... Okay, nothing too fancy, nothing too amazing. Uh, one of the few things that has what I've been doing is uh, I've been watching uh, the Disney Plus series Loki, and yes, um, Malaysia has uh, Malaysia has already have Disney Plus. Uh, not nothing compared to the American version or uh, Canada whatso. But we do have some of the um, Marvel exclusives and whatnot. So, yay, been really enjoying some of that. Other than that, um, haven't been doing much. Just been doing the regular things, work and whatnot stuff. 
So yeah, that, that's about it. Uh, so anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, and also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, uh, you can do so at patreoncom show. With every support, you get a week's exclusive, <laughs> a week's early access. To review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, myself, Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. <laughs>